In a previous video, I mentioned how much I like the term gene expression. It just sounds so cool when you get to express yourself and express genes. It's just a fancy way of saying if a gene gets turned on or off. So in any time of a life in a cell, some genes are being transcribed or expressed while others are not. And in eukaryotes, as with a lot of things we've been talking about in this particular unit, uh, there are some extra things that are going on which makes it a slightly more complicated in eukaryotes versus in prokaryotes. So the control of gene expression or whether a gene gets transcribed or not sometimes involves something called a promoter. And this promoter right here is a base sequence that's close to the actual gene. So here is the good stuff right here, but there is sometimes a sequence that's close to it. We call it a promoter. It's another example of non-coding DNA. If this section that we see right here is the actual gene that codes for a protein, then this is an example of non-coding DNA. And I have another video that describes all the different ways, all the different types of non-coding DNA and what they could possibly be used for. So the promoter itself is not transcribed, so we're not actually transcribing and translating the sequence, but it's kind of a little parking spot. It's a parking spot for the enzyme that needs to actually do the job of transcribing this gene where it can actually attach to. It's a binding site for RNA polymerase. Now, sometimes you can have some bad guy proteins called repressor proteins that can actually bind there into this actual spot and therefore prevent the RNA polymerase from actually doing its job. So that's good and it sounds bad, but it's actually good because it just makes sure that we don't actually express genes that we don't need to actually be expressed. So one way to control gene expression or one way to regulate genes is to have repressor proteins. And this is found through a lot of different specific examples. Repressor proteins can bind to the promoter to prevent transcription. So this guy's saying, RNA polymerase, you shall not bind. I was going to do a Lord of the Rings voice, but... I don't know, haven't done it for a while. Didn't want to embarrass myself. So what else can we talk about here? Sometimes there are some extra steps that need to actually happen. So at the promoter, before this RNA polymerase can, can sometimes bind, uh, besides bad guys that can block this thing, you can also have certain other proteins or other little things that are needed called transcription factors that are needed to bind to the promoter first. It's like a few extra checks and balances to make sure that you're not ready to go ahead unless you really need this particular gene to make this particular protein. Because you can think, in any kind of home or factory or work setting. If you don't need a particular service to be done, you're kind of wasting services if you have somebody or something continue to make this product when you don't actually need it. And instead, it's much better to only make the product when you actually need the product. So it's just a few extra steps and checks and balances in place to make sure that this actual gene doesn't get transcribed unless the correct transcription factors are there and then this site is not blocked. So it's another way to control uh, gene expression. So take a look at what I've put in these little boxes over here to kind of summarize what I just said. After transcription's all the way done, in the very end of this thing, just a quick reminder, it has to go in the five prime to three prime direction. You should be familiar with that if you're watching this video at this point. After everything's all done, uh, everything can basically disassemble. At the end, the DNA, the RNA, and the RNA polymerase are all going to separate. But in this video, we we're really emphasizing this idea that these promoter sequences can actually exist to help us to regulate gene expression a little bit more. And once again, this only happens uh, as far as we need to know in eukaryotes.